difficult issues, not of its making, Order. and address them in the, the nation. The member's time has expired. I call, Order. I call Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I want to tell this House a story, not a fairy tale that we've heard from the government benches, but a true story about the history of the political life of one Mr John Key for their benefit, which all started on the island of Waiheke Island, where he turned up with a $200 plus bottle of La Rosse wine to impress his mates of the National Party so he could get the shoulder tap to become an MP for National. So having influenced them with a $200 bottle of wine, they said, oh, we better have this John Key. He looks like he's a high roller. He's going to bring us a lot of money. One year later, it's October 2003, and he becomes a member of parliament and he returns from New York, having been a money trader for Merrill Lynch there. Don Brash at the time is challenging leader Bill English for the leadership of the National Party. And on the night before the vote, honest John Key, as they thought he was, visits Mr, visits Mr. Bill English at his home. He promises Mr. English that he will support him in the morning, in the leadership vote. He promises Bill English he will support him. English and, English and his supporters rejoice. Listen to this, because you, you might need to know this history. The back benches, you'll need to know this when you're doing a, doing a leadership reshuffle. Anyway, English and his supporters rejoice, because they're now confident of the numbers that they have got to topple Don Brash. Alas, alas, to, 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 to take the leadership. Alas, 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 the morning comes. The vote is held. The vote is held. To everyone's shock, Don Brash wins by a single vote. The one vote comes from who? The smiling assassin John Key. He double crosses Bill English. Isn't it incredible? The very same John Key, who the night before had promised Bill English his support, did it. He turned and gave it to, to, to Don Brash, and Don Brash uh, carried on into the leadership. The same John Key then carried on to build his political career supposedly on integrity. The same John Key, who in opposition railed against corruption, demanded transparency, and pledged to uphold his ministers to the very highest of ethical standards in all their conduct. But let's not forget, this was the same John Key who forgot to declare his financial interests in Transrail. This is the same John Key who forgot about an incriminating email about the exclusive brethren. This is the same John Key who swore black and blue he didn't know about his blind trust, only to be video recorded boasting about his shares in that very same vineyard. And what's more, this is the same John Key who promised not to increase GST, only to go and do so. This is also the same John Key who promised to open the government's banking with Westpac to open competition. But what did we get? Simon Power working for Westpac Bank. That was opening it to competition. This is the same John Key who told everyone he had never met with Stephen Joyce's former company Metaworks to discuss a $43.3 million loan. Despite, despite the fact that he had. This is the same John Key who blabbed that Standard & Poor's would give New Zealand a credit downgrade if it elected a new government, even though Standard & Poor's utterly rejected that suggestion made by John Key. This is the same John Key who apparently, apparently can't remember when the GS, GCSB first advised him of, his, of the spying with John, on Kim.com and also couldn't remember shoulder tapping his mate Ian Fletcher for the job as the director of the GCSB. The list, the list, Mr Speaker, goes on and on. Do we see a pattern here? Do we see a pattern? It beggars belief that we have a Prime Minister who cannot recall intelligence briefings and also has times, has times remembering what is the true story. It's truly incredible. It's truly incredible. Very economic with the truth. Very economic with the truth. It's truly incredible. And not even Hollywood would come up with a plot as extraordinary as we've seen with this dot-com GCSB affair. The Prime Minister has asked us to believe that either he is the victim of an incredible set of coincidences, which make it appear as though he was something, there's something to hide, or he really does have something to hide. 
What we want to know is what is the true answer. And we, New Zealand First and other parties, are calling for an independent inquiry into this. Get to the bottom of it. From the facts of this matter, we can't trust John Key to do anything. The National Party certainly can't trust him. Let's have an so inquiry. I, remember, Tom, I call Ian McKelvey.